Right folks, so welcome back to another video. We're at a Volkswagen dealership. You guys will remember this place if you've been watching the videos for a while. It's gonna be a good one. We're gonna get it up on the ramp, get you guys an opinion from a proper Volkswagen technician. Of course, as we know, this is the cheapest R32 in the UK. So it's gonna be interesting to see what's underneath. If there's any budges or anything hidden that we might not know about. I have actually already had it up on a ramp before I bought it. So I do have a rough idea of how this video is going to go, but I didn't share everything in the first video. But yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content so far. Even though it is a Mark V, it's totally different to the other stuff. So yeah, VR6 time today. Make sure you get that bite input, lad. So we're here with Jack, as you guys might remember from the grey GTI inspection video. Plan is, what well, we're going to put on the ramp, yeah. get it up in the air, um, give you guys just a general look at the underside. With the grey one, I remember there was loads of stuff like the tailgate was wrong and it had the wrong springs and all these little TFSIs were a bit fiddly to begin with. Yeah. But with this, it's just a big v VR6 lump in it. So yeah, it's like, I mean, the, the VR6 notoriously just, it does what it does. He doesn't really have much trouble doing it. Yeah. They don't suffer a lot of problems with TFIs. Don't be wrong, they've got the quirks, but... Yeah like as an engine and as a car that i mean the people who tend to buy these to have them had them because they had dough and they wanted the yeah. that sound yeah. like yeah you got the many people buying like a you know yeah. cheap gci to thrash his ass off so yeah it's literally from what i used to remember these were just like businessmen cars back in the yeah, day pretty yeah, much yeah, yeah. but yeah what we'll do uh shall we start off with the startup and just see what you think of that yeah sure nice little start up there as far as we're aware, this car has had a timing chain. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't really heard too many VR6s idling. Yeah. I mean, that, do you reckon that most of that is just the injectors? Yeah, 100%. That's yeah. just injector tick. Yeah. I mean, they're, as, they're, because they're basically, a, even though they're considered a V engine, mm. they're basically an inline six. Yeah. Um, it's a narrow, very, very narrow bank uh, V6. If you look at them like an inline. Right. And, uh, so they're smooth. They don't really make a lot of noises. I can't hear any chain. I can't hear any, any other noises. Yeah. So, no, good engine. I believe it's entirely stock. It looks completely stock to me. Um, there's a few body shop marks here, etc. So, probably I mean, someone's to be, tried to mop it. To be fair, because red, for some reason, just fades worse than any other colour. Yeah. This could be people attempting to try and bring the, the, the red back from like a pinkish colour. Yeah. So, I think that's probably more than that than anything else. Mm. If you look on the bolts and stuff, there's no witness marks to say yeah. that like the bolts have been off. Yeah. And obviously, Volkswagen, they paint all this after. Uh, it's assembled so generally speaking if it was going to be um you know a wing had been off or sort of that you'd yeah. see these marks here that they would like the paint wouldn't be there anymore oh, okay yeah so an easy indication to me it's all still standard it's still the same how you doing mate yeah not too bad buddy <laughs> right so the underside typical mark 5 with a few exceptions as we can see yeah and with uh, the whole four-wheel drive system being yeah. there as well really differential there we go so that's the key difference Haldex, of course. In terms of like the arms and stuff, it's not too bad. And no, I've seen worse in terms of like they're normally a lot more brown under here. Yeah, point, I mean, as a, as a, as a, you know, Mark V, as you well know, yeah. the last one was far more sort of yeah. weathered. Yeah, weathered. Than, than <laughs> Obviously, the anti roll bar started to flake yeah. here, but I mean, that all that thing does on a daily basis is twist and turn and twist. Yeah. So it, the paint's going to eventually crack. Yeah. But, and, and that, I suppose, is something that we'll probably change out anyway. Get a bit, just saying, yeah. a little excuse to improve. <laughs> excuse sure there's it. a white line anti roll yeah. bar or something <laughs> going in here soon. Get rid of some of that steer. Yeah, yeah. Exhaust. Now, this has been a big topic since the sort of first video is how loud this car is for a stuck exhaust. <laughs> yeah. Now, I was pretty certain that it is literally just a Resolite. Um, you it can is, confirm it is. it. 100% it's a Resolite. Yeah. yeah. So what they do is they, they took the resonator that would live here out. Yeah. Unfortunately, whoever's done it is like, use these awful clamps okay, that yeah. I'm just not a, a yeah, fan of. Yeah, these are too sort of narrow, aren't they? This yeah. would be a nice sleeve. And then here, you, I don't know if you can hear it, but you have got a slight blow. Okay. Yeah, that, you can hear it, yeah, yeah. And that blackening around there, around the uh, exhaust, obviously the soot that's um, mm -hmm. getting burnt off. Um, interesting. So really, uh, to fix that, you just replace the clamps. Basically. Use it with a good sleeve one, a genuine Volkswagen one yeah. will do it, and it'll just go over and cover it and it'll stop. I mean, I'm surprised this is as loud as it is, but the back box still intact. Yeah. That does surprise me. But, it is um, um, much louder than I thought it was going to be. It's quite, I mean, it's, it's got that, that B sound though, isn't it? It's yes, got that. it's still got that rumble, which is nice. I've noticed a few of the aftermarket exhausts, they get rid of that VR rumble, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Mm, but this but... has definitely got that rumble. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is different as well. It's like a, what, like a brace for the rear diff? Yeah, it's essentially it's like um, the aluminium carrier up here for the diff. Mm. Um, it's the the rear subframe, and this bolt sort of adds like lateral strength, I would suppose, to mm. the. Um, yeah. The rear chassis. What do you reckon of this then, Jack? Feel free to look relatively new. I think in the history it's that it's been done. It looks relatively new. Is that a genuine the, one? I, you know, I'd have to drop it off to tell, but it doesn't look genuine to me. Mm. To be fair, the difference between genuine and non-genuine parts, yeah. I got a lot of slack in uh, the last video in the comments from people are saying like, he's saying don't fit genuine things, but yeah. realistically, a Some high quality German part manufactured yeah. by, it's not manufactured by Volkswagen or Audi or whoever, yeah. it's manufactured by a company for them. Yeah. And if it meets the same requirements and standards, it is as good as an OE part. Very true. Some exceptions to the rule, but... You know. Generally, jacking points look okay. I mean, the, the chassis wise structurally is just solid. There's yeah. um, even even here. I mean, you're starting to get a slight split mm. of the underseal, but it's not rot. Yeah. The uh, you know the underseal's come away from obviously jacking, jacking, jacking. Mm. But I mean, it's solid. It's still you know there's little bits of surface rust, but it's seen a lot worse than some of the oh, job stuff yeah. I've had. There's, <laughs> there's, there's no holes or anywhere or anything like that. Yeah. And you come to the from the back of the car to the front, that exhaust is like quite boomy to your ears. Yeah. You come to the front and it's silent. Yeah. You know you, you can't hear a thing. As you guys will have known, I mentioned in the first video the tracking's off on this car. It's not just a sort of tracking issue where you can go to a lineman shop and get sorted. It literally has two different arms on it. Yeah, so it looks like you've got they're the two the same style arm, but they're two different brands. Yeah. So this here's got like a folded um, steel arm that's you know one type, and then here you can see the cast arm that would have come standard with the car. Yeah. So I mean the difference in that that I noticed is that the gap between the back of the wheel here. Yeah. Um, it's about, I mean, it's a rough measure, but it's about two fingers. Yeah, it's a bit side. more pushed. You can tell it's a bit more pushed back. And then here, you know, I'm getting three over here. So yeah. there's a definite difference in caster. Mm. Um, and then if you look, the rear arm bushes have been replaced. Yeah. One thing I did notice one, this one sticks out. Yeah. I mean, this one's flush. And this, and this one, one sticks out quite a bit. So someone's so pushed it back a lot. There, so. is, there is definitely a, a difference there. I mean, that could just be that that is longer. Yeah. But I would definitely say the reason for that it's just the, is, is just that arm. discrepancies in the arms. So I would either I would probably buy a pair of yeah, arms, do it all in one go, and replace it. Um, yeah, again, excuse to upgrade. Seems someone has tried to do some kind of upgrade. Isn't that it? Right, there's the um, the dog bay mode. Yeah, so Somebody actually fitted a, a polybush yeah. uh, dog mode. I don't know what the brand is, but I mean, yeah, you know, it's been done. So that's it's something. something. And I've obviously replaced the bolt here, and I would imagine in there yeah. that's a new bush in there as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, that causes that that gets rid of some of the wallow and the bog down you get on yeah. these. So. I'm not sure overall it is generally quite tight, but I haven't really pushed it too much because of like the whole arm situation. So I'm yeah. waiting to do that. Probably even get some aluminium arms on both sides, getting yeah. aligned, maybe nice and sweet. I'd also suggest as well noticing that for some reason the two, the two front bolts here mm -hmm. have been changed. Yeah, subframe bolts. All, all the other ones are exactly the same. If you look at those witness marks again around the edge, yeah. this subframe's moved over at some point. Yeah. So it might be worth, we have a special tool where basically uh, we slacker the bolts, so we put these tools in and it puts the uh, subframe exactly back to dead square. Right. So if somebody's had this off to maybe press this in at some point, yeah. and we can put that back to exact dead square and get it uh, back Sweet. to battery perfect. Sweet. So another thing on this car that I saw in the history was that it's had a full gearbox rebuild, the transfer box is new, clutch, everything. So I'm guessing this bit of sealant here obviously gives an idea. Yeah, some... I mean, it looks it looks to me like it's been a part. Yeah. Um, and you can see usually, with these, like this sealant dangling down and stuff, is a product of, you know, when it's been resealed. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a bit seep out, and they don't have that trouble at the factory because once yeah. they're made at the factory, they clean them off, mm -hmm. so they look perfect. And not that many people go under their cars. Yeah. But like you wouldn't see any of that. Yeah. So obviously, I don't know how long ago it was done. I but believe it's it was hit. two years. Maybe. Two yeah, years? that would make sense. Yeah. Then it's, like, it's recently been serviced because a brand new sump plug. Yeah. For somebody cared. I'm noticed the brakes on it are decent as well. Um, I mean, they've got the bigger calipers on these, which is what yeah, the GTI the boys normally put on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's ironic because you'd think with the speed of these things, you might not need the extra braking force, yeah. but it just comes with it. Like, but I think it was more of a spec thing, wasn't it? They were just, trying to show off. Well, uh, this is this is the the big bad R32, particularly yeah. for the Mark IV platform, which yeah. people love the Mark IV R32 so much. It's definitely a bit of a like, I, like when you bought this back in the days, you're basically showing, yeah, you've just got money. Yeah. yeah otherwise. Yeah. Running this thing five, seven year, a year on road tax and well, fuel. Yeah, and I think the fuel bill alone will. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be much higher than that. I'm more of a GTI guy, but I never really sort of was into VR6s. Um, but I had a few goals in this, and it was just basically sold on it just yeah. to experience it. Even if I keep it for a short amount of time, at least I could say I've ticked it off. Mm.
Oh, it's definitely something you should own. I always, I mean, I'm a big fan of big engine things myself, mm. and like, you should always do it at least once. Yeah. And it's that four-wheel drive. It's you know yeah. the, the big engine. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an R32 that yeah. everyone should at least do once. The other thing, I obviously, you need to check out here. We, we said about that is the tracking on this. You're yeah. running like what looks like racing slicks on the inside of it. <laughs> yeah, the inside of so, one. Uh, I don't know what tyres are fitted to this, but you'll probably end up throwing something jazzy on. Yeah, some standard Goodyears. I think there might be some just normal spec yeah, Goodyears. Yeah, nothing too particularly special. Some PS4s are pretty cheap these days yeah. now with the deals, so it's worth going for but one of them. Once you get the alignment straight and the arms sorted and everything good, yeah. set of tyres, it'll probably improve yeah. the car to nowhere. You probably were expecting more for us to talk about considering it's the cheapest in the UK but like, there legit is hardly anything on it to sort of speak about. From the perspective as a buyer, I've looked around this and I can't see anything with worry about. Yeah. I think now you just need to obviously just improve the bits you've found, get it polished up, back to the red. Get rid of these. Yeah, get these Shoot some flames. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shoot some flames for sure. I mean, I, I kind of feel like this is a turbo conversion myself. But... <laughs> if I had like a spare 10, 15 grand, I would. <laughs> like, like that. <laughs> yeah, number plate lights out for sure. That's the biggest issue on this car. Yeah. I'll do that, get off. <laughs> we'll get one of those fancy eBay ones on there where yeah, lights up. Yeah, ones that flicker. Yeah, where light, <laughs> lights up the whole road. Suspension, these shocks, you reckon they look pretty, they look pretty fresh, don't they? Yeah, I mean, the shocks look good. I mean, little things though, like uh, the bump stops fell down on this. So obviously, the little stop, let's get a tool. Actually, yeah, we'll we get the big snap-on torch now. The one that costs like 500 quid. <laughs> That's the sort of stuff we have here. So I mean, like even That's that, though, it's just so minor. Like literally that's supposed to cure the top of the bump stuff with like a little dust cover. Right. But it's it's just so minor. I mean, like with the rear springs, they're yeah. corroded, but then for the age of the vehicle, that's completely, yeah. you know. It's normal on these Mark 5s, isn't it? They're yeah, I mean, you, you know, if you're going to throw coilovers at it and things like that, it's you don't even need to worry about it. It's, yeah. Most people buy a car to build upon it and modify yeah. it. So like, everyone thinks, I've got to buy the most perfect advance for the yeah, car. It never yeah. happens with these now. What's the point? Because yeah. you can replace everything anyway, particularly with a car this old. Yeah. You know, probably 90% like you said, it's like a gearbox rebuild, it's like a diff rebuild, it's yeah. like the chain that's all. Oh, somebody spent yeah. some dough. Someone else as well, there's another thing that I like. They've done the cheeky uh, get rid of the, um, there's a baffle in there. Oh, has it got that uh, flapper yeah. delete or whatever and it's someone's called? literally just pulled the uh, vacuum on straight off yeah. it. It's probably jammed open. All it is is a baffle that basically closes off half the exhaust yeah. to reduce the volume of the exhaust. And then when a vacuum is applied to it, yeah. it whacks the baffle open. So when, mm. uh, sorry, the vacuum's taken away from it, the baffle springs open mm -hmm. um, and it gets louder. Yeah. You know? So it's a, it's a cheeky way of making exhaust louder and quieter on demand. Maybe that's why it's so loud then. I think so, yeah. <laughs> that and the rest of the... Compared to the, the, the gray one, yeah. which was still an excellent car and made great power. Yeah. And, you know, moved on to a, you know, a new owner, it was yeah. a good car. Good car, yeah. Uh, this thing, you bought it again, landing incredible. No, it's not just lucky, it's savvy, yeah. but you know, yeah. there's just nothing for me to comment on. Yeah. It's, it's a solid good car with a, with a tracking, yeah. an arm, and a couple of clamps to the exhaust. You've got a really yeah. clean example of an R32. Yeah, so it goes to show again, mileage doesn't really matter. No, it's this thing's done nearly 170k, look yeah. at it. So, you I mean, could buy one on 100k, and yeah. then you would have to spend chain, you'd have to spend inevitably probably the gearbox yeah. you'd have to spend on all the other little bits and bobs that's already been done yeah. and you'd be like way over the price that you pay for this it's true it's the same car it's like if you yes yeah, it's, it's bang on if you catch a car at the wrong time yeah. with everything's just about to go then you're in for like thousands in these yeah. in these cars but right so before we end the inspection we're just going to quickly do a diagnostic test I did run it with my kind of little Carly adapter briefly, but guys, I'll show you properly on here anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, so basically, this is just now loading up every single control unit in the car. Yeah. Uh, red generally it's got an event, it doesn't necessarily mean a fault, but it just means something it's picked up yeah. that it wants to uh, let me as a technician know about. Yeah. The oxygen sensor then, that was so the main That's one. saying the oxygen sensor heater, yeah? yeah? So if we could actually go into the fault memory now. Yeah. So you got. Um, Bank two, sensor two, internal resistance too high. Bank one, sensor two, internal resistance too high. And uh, engine oil temperature sensor circuit range. Now these are intermittent faults. Mm -hmm. So um, what that means is they're not currently a fault. Yeah. So at some point that oh, has okay. happened yes. and it's come up as a problem. Now yeah. that could be a result of um, when they took the exhaust apart, yeah. they've took the cats off, the, the sensors off, mm -hmm. and it led the register the fault. It yeah. won't put an engine light on because it's not current. Yeah, so intermittent, intermittent and static are two different things. Driver's door, heated outside mirror, I can pretty much guarantee that's the glass. Yeah. Uh, it's burnt out. 
driver central locking save motor, electrical error. That's going to be something inside of the driver's um, typical, central locking motor. Typical Mark 5. But yeah, Mark yeah. 5. Um, radio uh, yeah. antenna. So basically saying that the radio antenna to the stereo is open circuit. Okay. More than likely with these, you'll unplug the, the area at the back and plug it yeah. back in. It'll yeah. just come back to life. Just throw it in there. Um, instrument cluster, ABS, that nonsense. Okay. Uh, it just at some point the ABS control module has gone. I have a fault, okay. and it stays inside the instrument cluster until okay, you clear yeah, it out. Yeah. So again, no stress. And then left front and right front turn signals. Yeah. Uh, for some reason. Yeah, I believe they were changed when this. Uh... <laughs> Overall, as you can see, the cheapest RTH in the UK isn't actually as bad as you might think. So it's goes to show again, as with the previous project, the Grey GTI, you can get. I want to say lucky you just buy sort of you can sometimes take a chance and it'll be all right just basically look at the service history i mean with this thing i've only got sort of one or two invoices with it anyway so this was a bit of a risk but as you can see it's paid off i think we'll call it a day today jack mm -hmm. uh, that was a nice good catch up and also a full look at the r32 gives everyone an idea of what we're dealing with with this particular project isn't actually much we just got to mod it <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> but you guys make sure to subscribe for a lot more content to come Check out our Instagrams as well. So mine and Jack's will be in the description. You can follow his builds as well. He's always up to some crazy stuff. Take care and I'll see you in a few days time.